Hello there Libra, welcome to my channel, Victoria here, Radiant Moon Tarot. This is your September 2023 new love reading for all of you singles out there. If you're single, ready to mingle, and if you've maybe met an initial connection and you want to see where it goes, then this is the reading for you guys. So let's have a look here. First off, we do have Venus going direct uh, in the sign of Leo on the 3rd of September. So this is actually really quite exciting. Uh, this is where you might feel a little bit more confident. Uh, maybe you're going to take a creative approach to finding love. But Venus has been in retrograde for the better part of the summer. And it's been a little bit challenging to find the connection that actually sticks around and doesn't ghost you or something. Uh, you know, to find those, uh, those people that actually make you feel a little bit excited. For some of you, you've been in full on reflective mode. And so this is where you might be a little bit more decisive. Now we do have Mercury retrograde. We've got quite a few planets retrograde. So you may find at least the first half of the month being a little bit slower for you. And then things start to pick up just a little bit, um, especially once Mercury goes direct on the 15th, which is the day after the new moon um, in Virgo on the 14th. So if you're going to set any intentions to manifest love in your life or a specific person, you might want to do it on the 15th. Don't worry about uh, not hitting it right on the day of the new moon uh, because the energy does last three days before three days after. So you can still do it the day after that new moon. And it just might be a little bit um, better for you. You might be have a little bit more clarity. You might be able to speak your uh, manifestations into existence uh, a lot easier than maybe the day before when we still have that Mercury in retrograde. So just keep that in mind. We've got kindness coming out here for you. You're a humanitarian made of love and you're able to share that energy with others. So this is a beautiful energy of opening your heart, uh, getting yourself out there, getting to know people. You're very attractive at this time here, Libra, right? Because the energy that you're putting out is something that people do want to attach onto. And because it is filled with some beautiful, beautiful high vibe energy, right? And remember, we do attract what what, what resonates with our vibe that we're putting out there, right? There's uh there's a lot of uh a lot of truth behind the words of hey baby I dig your vibe at the risk of being quite cheesy. So you know that vibe that you're putting out there is beautiful right now and you attract the matching energy and people to you at this time. So it's lovely. We also have tolerance coming in here for green energy, your heart chakra very much open. You appreciate other points of view because you sense the love in everyone. You know, Libra, you just, you know, you're, you're pretty good at, you know, relationships anyway. You're finding balance and harmony in your life. You don't like things when they're out of kilter. And I feel here in this energy that you, are very much embracing a little bit more of an open mind. And it's not that you don't have one already. It's just that, you know, sometimes we do, you know, hit bumps in the road. And sometimes we do go through periods where we're, you know, very much um, not inclined to, you know, see other people's perspective because we're dealing with our own stuff. So I feel here in this energy, you're a lot more open minded, open hearted than perhaps you've been recently. Right. And all of those little bumps in the road that we've all been going through the last few months, I feel like things are settling down for you. Don't forget to show yourself a little bit of self love. You realize that love of self is necessary to love another. Yes, absolutely. 100%. Again, it's all about your vibe, your energy. We have to love ourselves. It, that energy starts from within. So don't forget to take care of yourself. Do something nice for yourself. And the Leo energy with that Venus direct in Leo on the third, Leo is about the heart. Leo brings uh, creativity, brings inspiration, and Leo energy also focuses on you, right? What do you want? What do you want to attract into your life? What kind of people do you want to connect with? Um, what shared interests are you looking for, for people to have for you? And with this energy, this is also where the Leo energy invites you to focus on self. So do something nice for yourself. 
don't fo so much focus on attracting that love to you, okay, or finding that love, right, being obsessive or controlling over it, because as we practice self-love, we open our heart a little bit more, things get a little bit calmer, we find a little bit more balance in our life, we feel good because we've opened our heart from within, and when we take care of ourselves, the universe and other people take care of us in return. So it's a beautiful energy there. Now, we've got some very interesting things coming in here for you guys in the month ahead. First off, the energy that you are emitting, that you are embracing right here, right now, at this present time, is the Nine of Cups. The Nine of Cups, of course, as a lot of you know, has to do with your wishes, your goals, your dreams, and this is your ability to attain them. So a wish coming true, a goal coming true, whether it's a personal one, whether it's one with your relationships, with finding attracting people, some of you have already met somebody. And in this Nine of Cups energy, you might be well, maybe... Um, trying to figure out if it's real because we do have a nine of swords coming in here as well. So you might be um, in this energy where you're overthinking, overanalyzing it rather than allowing it to blossom. Um, because in the nine of swords energy, you may be of the mindset that this is too good to be true. And so it's important to keep that positive mindset right? <clears throat> so that nine of cups there is an incredibly, thank you, incredibly positive energy, allowing you to make connections, to open your heart space, to receive all the blessings that are headed your way and to really connect with people on a different level. But don't doubt it, right? Because this is the energy you're putting out there. And this is what's active right here, right now. It's beautiful. So whether you do have something that you wished for that is coming to fruition um, in the month of September, or whether you are just in this beautiful, beautiful, um, open hearted, abundant mindset, either way, it's all good. Now coming out with that, I'm going to love this. We've got the Page of Wands. So the Page of Wands is exciting things. This is uh, your ability to manifest your desires into reality. Page of Wands quite often is some sort of exciting news or opportunity or endeavor, some invitations coming in here. And this is your, you're getting yourself out there. You're having fun. And of course, you may have already met some exciting um, connections. But the Page of Wands, Think about what it is that you're wishing for. What kind of person do you want? What kind of qualities in someone do you want to attract to you? Focus on the positive. Nine of cups. Don't focus on what you don't want. We only want to put energy to the things that we want to expand and blossom in our world. And it's very easy to get caught up in focusing on the things that we don't want. And it usually comes from fear or pain, past traumas. But it is important to shift our mindset there, right? Why put energy and effort towards something that you're just gonna you're just gonna say no to anyway? So focus your energies on what it is that you desire, what it is that you wish for, and give thanks to the universe. Thank you for bringing this to me, and it's here right now. Right. So page of wands it does show some wonderful things. You could also be breaking out of your shell. You might be going out on vacations and adventures. The page of wands is very inspirational, very creative energy, but also is one filled with adventure and excitement and a zest for life. So whether this is somebody that's coming in towards you or whether this is the energy that you're embracing, either way. It's wonderful. We've got the eight of wands coming in here as well. So some of you, yes, you've got some really good news. You've got some wonderful, wonderful things blossoming in your life right now. And this eight of wands, things are speeding up. Things are heating up for you. So if you've already made a connection and you're sitting here thinking, okay, this actually feels really good. I don't see any red flags at the moment other than those that I maybe create for myself with that nine of swords. And so in this energy, right, again, you know, maybe you're pinching yourself a little bit, or maybe you're just wanting to take things a little bit slow, um, because you want to just make sure that you're not reading the signs wrong. 
But the Eight of Wands does show that this is incredibly positive connection and that things are moving forward rather quickly, right? It is a card of speed. Now, this also has to do with you and your manifestations and your energy getting yourself out there, right? You are very much on the right track. You're hitting the right mark. Your energy is very much in alignment to manifesting and meeting the person, the connection, the relationship that you really do desire. You may need to be a little bit patient sometimes in this energy, but I do feel here that those doors, those portals, the possibilities are very much opening up for you. Things are very much aligning for you, and there is an abundance of opportunities and love and connection that is all blossoming in your world. It's beautiful. But we do also have the King of Pentacles and the Ten of Cups. I mean, holla frickin' luya. <clears throat> the King of Pentacles, excuse me is somebody, a person, who would be very nurturing, very caring, very committed energy. The King of Pentacles is very mature, doesn't shy away from responsibilities, and is someone incredibly dependable. They may be incredibly good in business, with money, with financial aspects, um, in this mature energy, right? It takes a long time to get to the king energy, very slow moving earthy energy. It could be an earth sign, uh, that you're attracting in or that you've already met. So, um, this could be Virgo, Taurus. Um, I'm feeling a strong, yeah, I'm feeling a strong Taurian kind of energy here. But that might not necessarily be for all of you. Uh, somebody who is maybe really good, uh, maybe like a banker kind of person or actually an accountant, maybe there as well. Someone who's pretty much a financial genius, a whiz with money, um, <clears throat> if, uh, if we look at it. Um, but it could also be Virgo energy that we're embracing and attracting here because we do have this new moon in Virgo on September 15th, right? Capricorn is also another earth sign, right? So it could also be some ca uh, Capricorn energy coming in here. But whatever it is, it could also just be a person who is looking for a long-term connection. They're looking to build a life with you. Ten of Cups, happy home, happy family. Um, forever, forever, happy ever after card is that Ten of Cups. But this could also be your energy and what you are setting out into the universe, right? This is the vibe that you're embracing. This is the vibe you're putting out there. You want someone committed and dependable. You want someone you can trust and you want someone here in the Ten of Cups where you can find your ultimate bliss and happiness and where you feel like everything has come together. But the Ten of Cups is a wonderful energy. So you're moving forward, right? The, the energy around you is accelerating accelerating right now, right? Nine of cups into the 10 of cups, right? So if you've already made a connection right now and in this nine of swords energy, perhaps you are a little bit worried about things. Is this real? Is it not real? Uh, is this someone I can trust? I'm not seeing any red flags, but oh, well, maybe they're really there. And the nine of swords energy, this is an energy coming in. And, you know, no, not necessarily the nicest energy, right? Because the nine of swords, we get up in our heads a little bit. Um, we do overthink, overanalyze, over, over assess things, right? We do kind of toss and turn a little bit. And, you know, we think, oh, I don't know, right? I doubting myself, I'm doubting the process. And, you know, and it's, it's the self imposed restrictions that we create for ourselves in the nine of swords energy. So while there's some beautiful, wonderful things blossoming for you, there is a little bit of a back and forth coming in here for you. And it may be that some of you here are clearing out some old energies, fears, and doubts, because uh, we do have a five of cups coming in here, which can represent a bit of a challenge for some of you. So some of you are trying to figure things out. You're very much trying to make a decision, right? And I can see here that you're actively trying to let some things go or you need to let things go. The energy is very supportive of you releasing any doubts, any fears, any over analytical thinking, right? And making a very clear choice. Okay. We do have the two of pentacles coming in here. So the two of pentacles, right? We're back and forth a little bit. Um, we're trying to make an important decision, um, in regards to love, but this can also be where we're, you know, we're, 
all in one minute. And then the next minute we're like, no, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't really trust this. Right. But again, in the nine of swords, we're imposing our own restriction. But the two of two of pentacles can also represent um, multiple options, multiple opportunities. And again, we've got abundance blossoming in your love life. And so you may have, um, you know, may need to make a decision, right? And maybe quick decisions here as well. And especially if you're doing something like online dating or anything like that, right? You, uh, I, I don't know what is swipe, swipe left or right or whatever it happens to be, yes or no. And so sometimes you need to be a little bit quick on the ball there with that, right? And you might find sometimes that's a little bit of a challenge, right? Because maybe you kind of, you know, spend a little bit too much time on each possible connection, right? You're looking for red flags, you know, that kind of thing, okay? Or you're just kind of a mm, little bit wary of the process, okay? Even if you're meeting people in real life, right? You may need to quickly assess situations and then make a decision. And that's not always the easiest thing to do. All right. But I do feel that there's uh, possibly some choices to be made and some multiple opportunities coming in in the month ahead. Now, you could also be a little bit wary about love, right? Because we've got the nine of wands here as well. So I do feel that some of you are very much completing a healing journey right now, especially the first half of September. And then I feel that things open up for you uh, a little bit in a little bit more of a positive direction, right? With that new moon in Virgo on the 14th. Okay, and that's where that earthy energy is coming in there for you. Um, but the nine of wands does show that there's some wounds that are there. There's some healing that you are trying to do. Or you may also be um, very supported by the universe here to because we've got a hanged man coming in. A hanged man represents surrender, sacrifice, letting go. And with the nine of wands, this does bring in the wounded warrior kind of energy. You've been through battles before. You have wounds. You've got battle scars, um, as a lot of us do, right? And in the hanged man energy, the universe is very much supporting you and saying, it's okay to open up. It's okay to let it go. Because in the two of pentacles energy, even though you want love, you might be a little bit back and forth on that. One day you want love and the next day you're like, no, nah, get alone, right? I don't know if I, I don't know if I want to open up, open myself up and risk being hurt again. So in the hanged man energy that's coming in here, this is giving you an extra energetic boost to release, to relax, to let go. This is also bringing in an energy of patience as well, taking a step back, um, reflecting on things, allowing something to blossom in its natural timing, right? And especially those of you who have met somebody, right? And maybe you want to, where does this connection going to go? Things are, you know, moving quite quickly for you a little bit and or things are about to move a little bit faster for you. And this could freak you out, right? Because we've got this eight of eight of wands over here, great fast forward kind of energy. And then we've got the nine of wands, whoop, putting the brakes on it. Okay. So for some of you here, this is uh, a necessary step for you, perhaps to just take a little moment, take a step back there and just assess and evaluate your situation. But just make sure in that energy that you're not creating a problem where there might not be one and we do that sometimes in relationships and it stems from fear it stems from here and fear and past hurts and you know those they lack of confidence sometimes right and so trust your intuition because the hangman brings you enlightenment it brings you clarity it brings you a big picture point of view and it actually opens you up just like we see with the tolerance energy here opens you up to seeing things from someone else's point of view seeing things from their perspective all right, but the hangman gets you in the flow. So we've got some resistance energy here for you, some doubt, some backwards and forwards kind of energy. But ultimately, the real big energy here helping you is that release, let go, be in the flow, open your heart, okay, and really trust your intuition in that. But some of you, yeah, you do have a little bit of healing to do here, okay, or there's something here that has come up Um um, come back up from the sur from beneath the surface, so to speak. The Five of Cups is an energy here where there's something that's potentially really positive for you, but we are focused on what we've lost or what we don't have. All right, and you know when we are looking for 
uh, love in our life or anything in our life, really, we do need to believe, we do need to focus on the positive. And we said that already at the beginning of your reading, right, is that if we focus on the things we don't want, the things that we don't have, we're going to get more of that, right? Why put the energy towards something that you're going to reject or that you're not interested in anyway? So the five of cups reminds us here that there may be some things that we've lost, these flowers floating in the water, the things that we've rejected and we don't want, the things that have caused us grief and pain, but there's wonderful things blossoming right here and this is what we need to focus on. And if you look at this girl in the card, it looks like Anna Green Gables or something with that long, um, with that long braid at the back, right? But she has turned her back on the things that she doesn't want. She's not paying them any attention. She is making a conscious effort to focus on the positive, to focus on what she wants to bloom in her world. And she is also leaving the past behind. She's turning her back on that. So it may be a little bit of a challenge for you to do that because that five of cups is not challenging enough. It's in your challenge position. Okay. So some of you are still working through some things. Um, and, but I do feel that there is a fresh start on the horizon, right? And so, you know, allow that energy to flow, allow yourself to feel and process some feelings, allow the hanged man energy here to help you to release any grief or doubts or those things that are, you know, really keeping you wrapped up in knots, right? We want this freedom. We want things to blossom. We don't want to create more resistance, right? So I do feel that there is this energy here is very supportive of you to release that resistance. All right. But we also do have the artist coming in here as well. Now the artist energy in this deck, um, it does speak to your ability to find beauty in things, your ability to make things beautiful, um, to believe in yourself, to create the things that you want. And with this coming out with the five of cups, again, you may cr be creating your own resistance, um, you know, in your love life, right? And it's not a blame game. It's not a shame game or anything like that. We all have things that we need to process. And as humans, we are incredibly good at sweeping things under the carpet. Right. We are incredibly good at ignoring or cutting things off because it's really like a defense mechanism, uh, especially in our brains and our hearts, um, because our we can only process so much at once. And so on the path to our healing journey um, or to gaining more confidence in ourselves and opening our hearts, it can be a series of baby steps. And we're like, why is this coming up again? I've been doing all of my work. And it's because we um, are we can only process sometimes small amounts at a time where we become overwhelmed. And this is our brain there really being in full on protection mode. So in the artist energy here, I do feel that there is some things you're creating. There's things that you're blossoming. You are blossoming as well. And there's a lot of beauty that's coming in here in September, but not without a side order of doubt, um, you know, or grief that you're processing there as well. And it may just be um, that you've healed from past relationships and things, but it may be in the five of cups that, you know, it's like you're just focused on the wrong thing, right? And you're wondering, why don't I have love yet? I keep attracting people towards me that need healing, that need fixing people towards me that aren't what I'm looking for. And sometimes we do just get in that mindset of focusing on that wrong thing. Right. So this is an opportunity here for you in the month of September to shift that focus. But the artist also reminds us in this energy <clears throat> that sometimes we do need to stay, take a step back and we do need to pause, reflect, we need to process. We need to connect with our emotions in a positive way. And this will allow us to let things go or to heal or to see things in a more positive light. And we've got the five of swords coming in here as well. And so this is some conflict, some turmoil. Okay. The five of swords can show that you're maybe, yes, still processing something here that is maybe welled back up to the surface that you thought you had already completed. And in this five of swords, this is the little voice that sometimes gets in the back of our head that says, 
you're not worthy. You'll never find love. There's no good people out there anymore. Right. And so we need to, we need to process all of that. We need to always, we always need to honor our thoughts and our feelings, um, good or bad. Right. And when we honor them, when we process them, um, we deal with them. Right. And we don't hide them somewhere away. So you might be unpacking something um, here in the month of September. But I do feel that there is a big release hangman energy at hand for you. So first, you got to bring it up and then you got to release it and let it go. The five of swords here can also bring in a little bit of conflict for you. OK, um, and this can, again, be some inner conflict. Right. Do I want love? Do I not want love? Right. And again, kind of focused on the things that are going to cause you grief and pain right so I feel with this you have an opportunity to overcome this and to feel a lot better and a lot more positive we do have the four of wands that's here for you as well and the four of wands is your 11 11 card right so make a wish nine of cups you have the ability here to get what it is that you wish for all right. Now, don't get discouraged because I do feel some discouraging energy here for some of you. OK, don't get discouraged because the energy, you know, energy doesn't just start and stop. Right. So, yes, I'm pulling your September energies. Right. And pulling out what it is now, what's being activated, what's coming in for you, but also what's challenging you here. And then, you know, we get a little bit of a viewpoint and where you're going to be possibly at the end of September. But remember this energy, you're all different. You're all in a different circumstance. You all have different stuff going on. For some of you, things are blossoming and you're finding love in the month of September. Others of you, it's a little bit more of a process. So this energy can take about six months to play out, right? We look at the new moon that we've got in the middle of the month. And then we look forward to the full moon that will also be in Virgo in about six months time. So all of this energy is being activated, carrying you forward. And again, it's just a matter of, is it going to go really fast for you? Or is it going to go really slow for you? Each one of you is a little bit different. So don't get discouraged on your journey for love because the four of cups energy or sorry, the four of wands energy here is saying that you are building a good, strong foundation. You're planting roots. You're getting to know who you are. You're making good progress right? So celebrate your successes, celebrate your progress, okay? The four of wands is an energy of renewed commitment, higher level of commitment, right? So maybe you just need to take that step back and reevaluate, reassess your situation or what it is that you even want out of love and connections, okay? And celebrate whatever you have. Celebrate even your challenges and your difficulties that you've been through, the things that you need to heal from, because those are the building blocks of life. Those are what make you who you are today the triumphs that you've um that you've embraced rather than defeat okay the life that you've rebuilt for yourself right the healing that you've done for yourself celebrate everything all right because all of the anything that doesn't work out for you there's a reason for that and there's life lessons to be learned but what they do is they show you your path forward right and they really highlight for you what it is that you really want, need, desire out of love, right? And so in those life lessons that we learn, we can close down old cycles, we can close down past trauma from this lifetime, past lifetime, close out those karmic cycles. And there's a lot of that going on right now. And then we move forward in a healthier, lighter and brighter way. So give thanks and be grateful for everything, even the negative things that have gone on. OK, because those are the building blocks that give you that foundation as to who you are now. But the four of wands is known as the 1111 card. Of course, you've got your wishes here as well. So make sure that when you are setting intentions and you are making those wishes, right, that you focus on what it is you want. All right. Now, the four of wands also is a very interesting energy to be in your challenge position. So it is number one. It is a card of celebration. Great. Right. Um there may be feelings of like jealousy and things like that or envy from people in your life, right? Because the four of wands being a card of celebration, this can be, um, you know, maybe you're attending a wedding or an anniversary, birthday parties, social engagements of all kinds. And it may not necessarily be for you. It might be for other people. And even though it's a positive experience, sometimes it does bring up feelings, emotions and thoughts to us, right? Imagine if you're going to a wedding and you've previously been divorced. You're automatically 
going to think of your wedding or your divorce, right? And this can bring up some feelings for you. Now, how you know you're fully healed from something is when you can think about something and not have any emotional response. That's how you know right? But in this energy here, this could actually bring you some, um, you know, realizations to the forefront. And this can actually be like a catalyst moment for you to very much clear that path forward to finding that love. But I also think in the four of wands energy that it's a little bit of a challenge to get yourself out there socially for some of you. Okay. And, you know, you might need to make a very conscious effort to go to somewhere that you've been invited to go. Maybe you just don't want to go solo. Um, you know, maybe there's people there that you don't want to see, um, you know, or maybe you just feel a little bit awkward, right? If you are going to, you know, if you don't have a date for something, right? And it can be a little bit challenging in those social environments when we are single and other people are all coupled up. But, you know, here's the thing. If we want to look on the bright side, which the Five of Cups in, um, invites us to do, you go to an event, okay? Maybe you decide to go solo or maybe you bring a friend or something, right? Here's the thing. You don't have to hold anyone's hair back when they throw up if they go overboard, okay? Um, you can arrive when you want. You can leave when you want. You don't have to have, you don't have anyone, um, you know, tugging at your, at your purse strings saying, um, hello, we need to go now. You can, you've got a little bit more freedom, right? You can talk to whoever you want. You can connect with whoever you want. You can have yourself a really good time and you can dance the night away if that's what you're so inclined to do. Or you can deke out a little bit early, go home, put your pajamas on, uh, have a glass of wine by the fireplace and watch TV, right? Whatever floats your boat, right? You're not tied to anybody. So sometimes going solo to these events can actually be a blessing. And it's really just how we look at it, right? Um, and it is that little bit of freedom there. And plus, like I said, I mean, you can talk to whoever you want. You don't have to look out for anybody, right? And it's not to be selfish or anything like that. It's just like, I, I don't have anyone dictating anything to me about this evening. I'm just going to have a good time. So that's that bright side of those things. Okay. But yes, some social engagement might be a little bit challenging for you in the month ahead. So just a little bit of a heads up. But we do have the Queen of Swords coming out here for you. Queen of Swords is a beautiful energy. And this is where we're getting clarity, a sense of focus. We're using our wisdom. And maybe you've even got some really positive communication coming in here for you with the Queen of Swords, someone that you're meeting, someone that you're talking to, or you're just very simply opening up the lines of communication. Now, for some of you here, you may be, um, you know, uh, have multiple connections that you're talking to, okay, or you're have really figured out what it is that you want. And this particular queen of swords, right, sitting on top of, uh, it looks like a balloon taking things to new heights, but is looking out um, with that telescope into the future. All right. So it can be a little bit of looking out into the future and getting clarity on where you want to go, what you want out of those relationships, right? But the queen of swords is <clears throat> an energy where we're very open. We're very receptive to love and connections. Okay. But we, um, thank you. Um, but we are a little bit cautious. Okay. It's like you're opening your heart, but you've got some very clear boundaries, right? Queen of Swords, excellent energy for putting up boundaries. And, you know, the, the poor Queen of Swords, right? She's quite often, uh, quite often gets the short end of the stick, right? Because this Queen of Swords energy, sometimes we can come across as a little bit cold. And so, you know, just be a little bit aware of that energy that you may put out there is like, you're opening up communication, you're talking to people, but you're not wearing your heart on your sleeve necessarily, even though your heart is open. <clears throat> and sometimes it can, you know, just stem from a little bit of fear, anxieties, things like that. But sometimes we put up very, um, you know, very firm boundaries, but we got to be careful when we're putting up boundaries. Are you putting up a healthy boundary that lets the good in and keeps the bad out? Or are you putting up a wall? So the Queen of Swords reminds us that boundaries are healthy, but walls are impenetrable. So we want to make sure that we're leaving enough openness and enough space for the good to flow into us, right? Because those walls keep everything out.
Okay, so we just need to be aware of that in that energy. But I do feel with the Queen of Swords that you're very tapped in, tuned into your intuition, that you're really looking out into the future and all lines of communication are open, granted with some very healthy boundaries in place. We have the well, the wishing well. Ooh, make a wish. The well is a wonderful, wonderful energy of having the resources that we need, throwing a penny in that wishing well. This is where we're opening up all of our creative powers um, in a super positive way. We're nurturing ourselves. We're showing ourselves some self-love. We're also in the energy of nurturing relationships and ideas and connections, right? We're not rushing into things. We're taking our time, but all lines of communication are open. So the well brings some beautiful energy along with the wheel of fortune, the well and the wheel. Here we go. The wheel of fortune, right place, right time. The tides are turning for you. This is, you're entering a period of peace, healing, harmony, wish fulfillment, luck, abundance, growth, expansion, all beautiful things opening up for you. The tides are turning for you in a positive way. When we get the Wheel of Fortune, uh, ruled by Jupiter, we like Jupiter. Um, this does open up things for us and it does represent positive changes ahead for you. Um, but it's an energy of fate. So there's some faded events opening up for you, right? Your destiny is calling for you. Things are coming into alignment for you in this energy. But the Wheel of Fortune says, um, just like a ship's rudder changing direction, right? There's sometimes a little bit of turbulence as we change cycles and shift direction in our lives. So that's where these challenging energies are coming in. So even though this is a time of... Um, making more opportunities and, um, you know, meeting people and you maybe even getting a little bit lucky. Okay. It's not without a little bit of a bumpy ride along the way, along the path. So you're being very encouraged to see the positives out of this. Okay. But the wheel of fortune does move you and align you with your destiny. Okay. So some wonderful, wonderful energies. And here's our Virgo energy with the hermit card coming out here. So told you earlier, I was feeling some earthy energy, uh, Taurus or Virgo, and here's your hermit. So the hermit card does represent that at this new moon in Virgo on the 14th, incredibly positive time here to set your intentions and make a wish. OK, um, this is also a time where some things may blossom for you. OK, or you really just gain some clarity on what it is that you want. OK, now the Hermit card can also represent that you're being aligned with a Virgo person or somebody who has opened, has been through a period of spiritual growth and healing for themselves as well. Right. Because the Hermit does bring a little bit of spiritual essence to us. Um, it does bring um, a lot of healing on a lot of levels. And it's also um, an energy here of, you know, doing a little bit of soul searching. So I feel that this person um, that you are coming into alignment with, they may or may not be a Virgo. They could just be somebody who has has done their fair share of healing. They have grown. They have learned some life lessons and they are wishing for you just like you are wishing for them. But the hermit can also be your energy. Okay. So some of you do need to make a very conscious, conscious effort to get yourself out of hermit mode. Okay. Get out there and socialize a little bit, open up those lines of communication. Um, the hermit also does bring healing to you. So if there's things that are coming up here in the month of September, it's a great opportunity to release, as we've already said. And that the hermit as well reminds you to set your intentions, right? What lights the hermit's lantern is the star, the wish that you make, the intentions that you set, all right? And this lights your path forward and shows you the way. It also attracts people to you, right? Like a moth to a flame. Okay. You can attract people to you at that time, but it's a very calm, very down to earth energy rather than forceful and chaotic, right? We're a little bit more, um, grounded and centered in our approach to love, um, when we get that. 
All right. And just like a moth to a flame, a, like a bee to honey. All right. We've got the queen bee energy coming in here for you. And I love this, right? Because the queen bee, right? The queen of the hive does not force anyone to do anything to, for her. Um, emits beautiful pheromones out there to attract the worker bees to her, right? And in the queen bee energy, you have the ability to attract whatever it is that you are putting your intent, setting your intentions for and whatever energy that you are putting out, this is what you attract back to you. So again, be very aware of that, right? We want to put out the energy of love and kindness and truth and honesty and compassion and love, right? And that's what will flow back to us in this energy. So your power of attraction is on point. But make sure you are attracting the right thing. But I do feel that some of you here, your fears are about to be um, allayed. You're about to let go of things. You're going to find more calm and peace um, in yourself here with the Sleeping Beauty's dream energy. So um, if you've been worried, tossing and turning about things or something that's going to go on in the month of September, whether you just get clarity about something or whether there's just this beautiful healing and letting go energy where you are very much more at calm, at peace and at ease. But the Sleeping Beauty's dream is card number three, and there's something that you're dreaming about or someone that you're dreaming about. Now, for some of you already, you've met this person, and um, yeah, things are growing in a very positive way for you. It might be a little bit of push and pull, a little bit of stop, stop and start, and it's because you might put the brakes on things just a little bit, um, and it's just to kind of like, okay, hold on, I just need to, I just need to figure this out, right? But with the Sleeping Beauty's dream, I do feel that some of you are seeing your person that you're attracting towards you in your dreams. Now, they might be faceless. You might not even know um, when you wake up, you might not even, you know, be able to recall what they look like or what they did. But you're feeling the energy, you're feeling the feelings and you know that you've been touched in your dreams. You know that someone has entered your life energetically and so when you wake up it's almost like it's real even if you can't actually see it because the energy is still active there for you so I do feel that there's either someone you're dreaming about okay and you know who this person is or something is being activated here for you in September and you are dreaming about the person that you are attracting towards you so interesting energy there for you but you have the ability to attract anyone to you. So believe in yourself. Be confident, right? It's your time here, Libra. So I'm going to leave that there for you guys. I hope there was something here that resonated with you on some level. If so, please like, share, and subscribe. I thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a fantastic September, and I will see you guys later. Bye.